What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. The snow has melted. We are back, baby. So happy to be back out here and actually get some practice in. It is still cold. I think it's like two degrees Celsius right now, but I don't know. I just, honestly, the cold weather, I kind of like training in the cold. I actually prefer it to like those stupid hot days. Sometimes in the summer, you play in those like 35 degrees Celsius days. To me, playing in those, way worse than playing in this. But that's just me. Anyway, what do we got cooking today? Well, a couple things. First, definitely gonna run through the putting course because we have access to this. There's a putting thing I wanna test, so I'm gonna go back and forth between that. Um, brought my old ping wedges back today because I just wanna see, you know, now that my technique has changed and I kind of realized, you know, it's not the wedge, it's me. I've always really liked those wedges. And I'm also trying to figure out too, like what should be in the bag for 2022? Because uh, I definitely haven't been awesome at picking the right gear for me over the past two years. That's for sure. So we're gonna dive into some of that today. Anyway, let's get to chip. after hitting a bunch of chips with those. I love those ping wedges. I have been through hell and back with those ping wedges. Got my first hole in one with those ping wedges. I love ping. I think they're a phenomenal company. But even with the good technique, I just don't find I have the same control with them versus the jaws. I find with the jaws, like first and second shot are where like my first shot is always really good with my chips. And then my second and third, I'm just trying to mimic it. Whereas I found with those pings, I was trying to get it by the third shot. And you saw in some of those clips, I was just trying to figure it out by the third shot. So, I don't know, you know, I think, I'm just kind of debating, you know, the route I want to take here. I, is, is there value in having a totally mixed bag or is it better to stick with one manufacturer? I've kind of tried both paths. I'm still on the fence. Sometimes it's nice to be in one ecosystem and not think about it. But then I think there's also value in having options to explore whatever you want, you know? Um, because certain manufacturers could be pushing the boundaries in certain areas, right? Like if you saw Bryson's video, uh, he's testing the new prototype Cobra drivers. He's got a new driver coming specifically built for high speed players, right? For someone like myself, who's trying to push speed, you know, is the Cobra driver a better option? But if you're committed to one manufacturer, now you can't try that product, but you might like everything else that you have already. So anyway, just balancing act. Um, one thing I want to test, one other thing we're going to test right now in the putting green. Obviously we have my putter, but we got the spider back today too. I don't know. Guys, my best putting performance I've ever had. It's my Autoflex course vlog. I should have shot like eight or nine under that day. I made stupid bogeys as a result of like the rain and having to rush through a sixum. Like I was putting lights out with that putter. And then I think I screwed it up by putting a stability shaft in it. Because that shaft, the normal regular shaft in that putter with this stock, I was becoming really good. And I think I blew it by trying to make it better. Anyway, whatever. We're gonna do the putting course today. I'm gonna test those two putters against each other. See if it gives us a more definitive result.
Honestly, I just wanted to do that test to see if it was worth reshafting this. Because, again, I putted my best with this when it was just a normal shaft. I don't know if this is the play. Because, um, honestly, I never putted as good with this after I put the stability in it. And that's what kind of led me down the path to then going to the blade in the first place. I just wanted to see if it was worth bringing this back to its original kind of stock setting. And I think it is worth investigating. Now we're gonna try out heads up putting. This is from a guy named Sasho McKenzie. He's the founder of the stack system. He did some studies off this. I'm gonna link below to his talk about heads up putting. But essentially what it is, is instead of looking at the ball while you hit it, you look at the target. And so we're gonna test that if we go heads up. Isn't that super interesting? So heads up putting in a nutshell, right? Is essentially looking at where you want the ball to go and then just doing it, right? Cause you know where I heard Sasho explain it and this kind of made the most sense to me is if you're gonna shoot a basketball, right? If I told you to shoot a basketball right now and you had the ball, would you look at the ball? No you look at where you want to shoot the ball. Sometimes with putts, we get so fixated at being over top of them and getting so mechanical that I wonder if sometimes we miss the boat and that's where we lose sight of our speed, our line. Another thing he talked about is, is he said, our brain, you know, if we take a look down the line, right? And then look back at the putt, there's a time frame that our brain can only remember that distance and be able to judge that accordingly. But if we're looking always at the target, the, our speed control should be much better. So the reason why I wanted to do the two putter test today was because one, I wanted to see, like I'm putting really well with this, but again, you know, I wanna just, what I want out of my 2022 setup is just no volatility, right? I wanna make sure that I don't, that on my bad days, I'm still doing what I need to do. And on my great days, I can take advantage of those great days. and. I don't want anything in my bag that puts too much pressure on having to be perfect. And so I just want worry sometimes with the blade that it requires me to be a little more perfect. And so I think with today's test, it's worth putting the other shaft in that putter and then just seeing what happens. But heads up is something too that I thought, okay, so now, now that we're getting good with putty, now that we've got our stroke and our setup down to a better spot, heads up, I wanted to see if I could put it in play to even dial my speed in, dial my start lines, make it even better because it just I'm just fascinated by it. So uh, definitely something I'm gonna continue to further explore, but that was a cool test. I got one more putt in with the heads up with the blade. So that was interesting because what I, you know, one more putt around, that's worth it. That's worth the price of admission. And then I can't really test it today because of the snow and the greens are so slow but it would be interesting to also do a lag putt test of head down versus heads up because I think that's where heads up really uh, earns its money because being able to judge a longer distance and lag it closer, that could be much more beneficial. What a difference a day makes. Look at this, from how snowy it was yesterday to now, this is wild. See, and there's the thing about the ping wedges, right? I didn't chip as well with them. When I hit these as a pro in the approach, they are money. They are so money. Um, I find I hit them much straighter and much more at my target. So I don't know, maybe I just need different bounce or different grind options um, to make the chipping work. But for approach, like I just right here, three in a row straight. So, still TBD. I also think the Hydro Pro coating on their stuff is probably one of the most like underrated pieces of tech. Cause especially like when dealing with wet conditions and stuff all the time here, seems like a big advantage to have it. So anyway, further testing to be continued, but 
I don't know. I'm still in a battle between if these or the Callaways should be in the bag. Guys, I am on one tonight. Oh my goodness, I am hitting the ball. This is the best I've ever hit the golf ball. This is literally the best I've ever hit the golf ball. I, can, I have never, oh my goodness. You know what's funny? So I saw some comments on yesterday's vlog um, complimenting my short backswing. And I thought that was, uh, and I appreciate those comments, but I thought that was funny because the reason why I have a short back swing is because I have so much PTSD from going through this swing change, from absolutely shanking it, that I haven't turned properly in months, right? So now that I've been working up to this point and working on these fundamentals, I can finally turn. And today I decided because of the short swing comments, I thought, you know what? Let's go full swing and let's just see what happens. Oh my goodness. Guys, I just absolutely destroyed a seven, that seven iron, okay? 106 swing speed with a seven iron, 199 carry, 134 ball speed. I don't even know what the ball speed's supposed to be on a seven iron. Oh my goodness. And that, like I wasn't ripping. I was just turning properly and rotating. Wow. Okay, let's just keep hitting. All right, hitting it way too good. Need to go buy more range balls from Chris. Let's go see. Come on. I'm striping it. Have another bucket? How many? Uh, just 45. Okay. There you go, sir. Thank you, Chris. Have fun. Go stripe some more. I will. Got more balls. We're gonna hit a couple long irons now just to see. Uh, then I wanna cycle through to up to the driver because I just wanna see what that's like tonight um, with all this length and power. This is crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I honestly can't believe it. Uh, again, in terms of irons, like 20, 22, what's in the bag? I keep hitting the mirrors like this. I think they'll stay. I was debating if I maybe needed something more forgiving, uh, but I am crushing them tonight. So we're gonna put that conversation on hold because I don't know.
126. Let's go. Let's go. Wow, what a range session. Well, obviously my ping hybrid, my ping three wood and my ping driver are staying in the bag. Guys, that three wood, I have never crushed a three wood like that. The way that felt coming off the face, oh my, I have never experienced that. Um, driver swing speed today, I remember last year having to try way harder to get to 126. Because I'm going to break 130 with the Ventus. This is a much heavier driver than what I was using last year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We are going to put up numbers. This is wild. This is the greatest range session I've ever had. Uh, anyway, I'll pick this up at home and uh, give you guys the rest of the lowdown. All right, tonight's bulk meal, we've got two burgers. My girlfriend's only having one. But I got two burgers, fries. Probably should eat some vegetables at some point, but uh, this is what we're rolling with. Gains, baby. And now I know, you know, the meals lately are looking a little too fun, but I'm making everything myself. And so I'm able to make things a lot healthier than if I was to buy this as is, right? Like the beef is like organic grass fed uh, beef and I got it from like a local butcher. And so, you know, the burgers, yeah, there's, there's some stuff in there that's not totally clean um, in terms of like healthy eating. But from a macro level, these are covering all my bases to help move the weight gain. So I'm trying to break hopefully 180 this week. I keep fluctuating between like 179 and like 177 right now. So I'm trying to just like break through that barrier. So hopefully we're gonna get that. But it seems like the workouts and everything are translating exactly how I want. Guys, this rain session tonight, I, like I think it was like two vlogs ago, I said I can't wait until the results of like the that latest kettlebell workout kind of set in with my core and I was just able to rip through the ball tonight in the way I know I can and I wasn't even pushing speed like that's me just swinging but like I'm not swinging out of my shoes yet like I'm not pushing speed I'm not even trying to hit those numbers that's why I was so shocked that I hit 126 with the driver and hit 106 with the seven iron like I wasn't even trying to push speed I was trying last year way harder than I am now to push speed. And I wasn't even putting up these numbers this early. So this is like an unreal sign of progress when it comes to conditioning and, and just working on the swing and how the body is reacting. I could not be happier to be seven weeks into this and seeing results like this. And then to cap off like the other big things, obviously, you know, putting together my bag for 2022, obviously with my improved strength and with my better swing, I want now the tools that are going to allow me to just facilitate that motion over and over and over. So the top of my bag is solid. I don't, I don't want to make any changes. I love how everything feels. I love how stable it is. The three woods awesome. The three hybrid is amazing. And I also picked up the ping two hybrid. So I have the two hybrid and the three hybrid, um, because I think for certain courses I play having that two hybrid that can just like hit these low bullets that run out forever. Um, especially on tighter courses. So many of the courses I play out here are so tight. I don't really use a three wood off a tee here, nor do I ever really need a three wood in like as a second shot on a par five, just because we're not playing courses that are like that, that long, right? Versus like if I was to play courses, maybe back out East, I would need that. So I'll have some variability on the top end, but that's pretty much like set and solid. Ventus shafts and everything, ping, done, happy, sign off. Again, the putters, as you saw, like when it comes to the putters, I think the plan is to have these two putters, have one that's my primary, which will most likely be the Odyssey, and then have the spider as a backup if things go sideways and I just need a different look at something. Um, I don't want to have to go back and forth. It's more so just like if I feel like I'm struggling and I need more forgiveness, then I can go to that. But ideally, I'd like to just go with one. I am going to test taking the stability shaft out of the spider and just going back to the stock setup and seeing if that yields different or better results. Maybe that might kick the Odyssey out of the bag. Who knows? But I think it's just a seesaw battle between those two, depending on how I'm playing and how I'm feeling. So that's mine. Wedges. Again, like 
the, the Callaways do so well. Um, I think the biggest thing I actually need to do with the wedges is that I haven't put proper shafts in my wedges yet. So all my wedges have to currently just have the stock shafts that they come with, which are not stiff enough for what I need. I know I'm losing a wedge, my control on wedges with approach simply because I'm not playing a stiff enough wedge. So I know I need to get way, I need to get that dialed in. Playing with the Miros with the 6.5s in them, I just notice a big difference when I bring the speed up that I don't get that crazy variance in left to right dispersion that I do whenever I try, you know, bring my Callaway irons out again with the less uh, stiff shafts, things like that. So I, it's important to get that nailed and, and that'll be something I'll be considering moving forward. And then with the irons, um, man, if I hit the mirrors like I did tonight, well, then they should stay. I think, you know, what, my only real concern is that when you look on tour, right, you know, you, you look at success leaves clues and there are reasons guys play certain things. So like ping at the top of the bag is like, yep, guys play that, you know, Odyssey spider putter, guys play that. Ping, uh, Jaws wedges, ping wedges, guys play that. You don't really see guys play mirrors, right? And, and guys are moving away from blades and playing more player-ish irons, right? And, you know, I saw an interview recently with John Rahm talking about his TCBs. And he was, even he was saying, you know, he, he wants more forgiveness. And it's like, he's the number one player in the world. So it's like, okay, if the number one player in the world wants more forgiveness, well then... Who am I, right? Um, so that would be my only concern is that I don't know if I'm just making life harder for myself when if I have the speed, if I have all these things that can that are X factors for me, if I give myself a little more forgiveness where I can just swing a little harder and go for it, um, you know, would that yield better results? So so I think that's that's definitely something as I investigate what's gonna be the 2022 bag setup. I really like the, the Project 6.5 shafts. I think those are those are fine. I, the only thing I am slightly thinking about though is that if I'm swinging it this fast in the winter, this cold, right? Like that rain session, I was out there, it was three degrees Celsius, right? So I'm swinging a super stiff shaft, three degrees Celsius, 106 with my seven iron, right? I wonder if I should get this, the Project X 7.0s um, in the spring, because in the summertime, when I'm loose, I'll be even stronger than I am now. Will I retain some of that control? And Rory plays the seven point O's and he, he, he swings around that same speed. So, um, something I might consider as an option, but man, I, it's, it's going to be interesting to test. You know, it, I'd love to, f I, I need to find, a, I need to find a home base where I can test and dial clubs in. That's the one thing I don't love about golf is there's not really a place to go to like properly test things. It, it, custom fitters don't work that way. You, you get little moments of time to go in and test, but in order to properly tell if something works with your game, you gotta dive a little deeper. I'm hoping I can find the right base so I can test, thing, test all these crazy ideas and lock everything in, but guys, we are in a great spot. Great, great spot. I am so happy. This is incredible progress. So anyway, time to finish off my calorie intake for today. And uh, that'll be the end of this day of training. Thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate all of you. Like, subscribe if you have.